When you first have a newborn patient, it's your first opportunity to really see how healthy the child is and to screen for any congenital abnormalities. So the first thing you do is just a general visual inspection. You want to see how the infant, how the newborn is laying on the bassinet or on the table that you're examining them. Infants will naturally go into a flexed position because that's the position they had been in the uterus. So their arms should be flexed, their legs are usually pretty flexed, they may be sleeping comfortably. I like to do a head to toe approach with the exam so that you don't forget any of the crucial components. Starting with the head, you're going to palpate the head, feeling for any birth trauma, any um, signs of birth trauma, cephalohematoma versus a caput succedaneum. Remember a cephalohematoma is not going to cross the suture lines, right, that is significant for a problem underneath the periosteum, so it's not going to cross the suture lines, versus a caput is just that edema, um, usually from the fetus's head pushing against the birth canal. You're also going to be feeling for fontanelles, making sure the fontanelles are open, soft, and flat, identifying how large the fontanelle is. We expect the fontanelle to be there till about one year of age. If the fontanelle closes early or the fontanelle is not palpable in the newborn period, that may be a sign that the patient has had some um, premature fusion of the sutures, um, which could be concerning, so craniosynostosis. If the fontanelle is very large, you may be concerned about things like hypothyroidism. Next, you're going to move down to the eyes. In the eyes, you're going to look for the red reflex. We look for the red reflex by using the ophthalmoscope. You put the ophthalmoscopic head on the otoscope um, and look with the bright white light. So the round white light, you want to ideally be far enough away from the newborn that you can shine that circle of white light over both of their eyes. So that way you can really see if that red reflex is symmetric. You can check the symmetry of it. If you get leukocoria, which is a white um, glow back at you instead of the red reflex that we're expecting as you look through the ophthalmoscopic head, um, then that would be concerning for things like retinoblastoma or congenital cataracts. You're going to look at the general features of the face, see if the face looks dysmorphic at all. Do they have any feature, facial features that are similar to Down syndrome or to fetal alcohol syndrome? You're going to look at the eyes and see are they too close together, hypotelorism, or too far apart, hypertelorism. You're going to see where the ear connects to the head. Um, it should be right if you draw a lateral line from the most lateral um, fold of the eye. Draw, draw a line lateral, that should be right where the ear connects to the head. Is, do they have low set ears? Are their ears connecting lower than that? That can be a sign of other congenital abnormalities. You're going to put a glove on your hand and stick a finger in the baby's mouth um, to both check the suck reflex um, as well as to feel the soft palate. Sometimes infants that have a cleft palate, their palate will be cleft and there will still be a mucosal layer covering it. So if you were to just look in their mouth, you may not be able to visualize that cleft palate. So you want to be sure that you're feeling the cleft palate as well as assessing how strong the infant's suck is. As you move down to the infant's neck, you're checking for torticollis. Are they able to move their neck well and easily? Um, you're feeling along the clavicles. Remember that a clavicular fracture is one of the more common birth injuries. So feeling the clavicles to feel if you feel any step-offs or any major um, masses or if you can actually palpate the fracture. Then you move on to the chest, visualizing do they have um, a normal position of their nipples? Uh, do they have... Um, pectus excavatum or um, pectus carinatum, so just generally looking at the, the shape of the chest. And then you start to listen, listening to the heart, making sure you don't hear any murmurs. Um, if you do hear a murmur, you want to make sure that you listen at the back, listen at the axilla and see where those murmurs may be radiating. So you're going to document that as well as allow that to help drive your differential. As you're doing the cardiac exam, you're going to want to palpate the brachial and the femoral pulses. Remember, you want to palpate the right brachial and the right femoral at the same time, making sure those pulses are happening even and equally. Um, if they're not, if the lower extremity pulses are weaker or they're delayed, you'll 
be concerned about something like a coarctation of the aorta. So you feel both the left side, the left brachial and left femoral, as well as the right side, right brachial and right femoral at the same time. Um, you're going to listen to the infant's lungs, make sure their lungs sound clear and you can hear good breath sounds throughout. Remember that infants are periodic breathers and so you may have to hold your stethoscope in one place for a while before you have them take a deep enough breath that you can really hear the breath sounds. Um, then as you move on to their abdomen, you're going to be feeling for any masses, feel for hepatomegaly, splenomegaly. Um, the masses that you may feel in an infant's abdomen most often are related to the kidney, to hydronephrosis or polycystic kidneys. So if you do feel a mass, you probably want to get an ultrasound. You're going to look at the umbilical stump, um, make sure that the stump is intact. If the newborn is early enough, if that stump hasn't totally dried off, you can take a look and make sure that it was a three-vessel cord. Um, otherwise, we're really checking right around the umbilicus to make sure that there's no erythema, no signs of infection. Infection in that area is called omphalitis and it's a medical emergency an infant would need to go on IV antibiotics and have a full um, rule out serious bacterial workup um, infection, uh, infectious workup in order to be able to figure that out. Um, and then you move on to the extremities. So you're looking at the digits on both the hands and the feet, making sure that they have good grasp reflex, um, making sure that there's no webbing, no um, fuse digits, that they have all five digits of both, looking at the um, creases on their palms and soles, um, looking for any abnormality, any single palmar crease. Um, you're going to do the hip exam. The hip, hip exam is done with the infant laying prone. So as they're laying prone, you're flexing their hips. So this is the Barlow and the Ortolani maneuvers. You're flexing their hips as well as flexing their knee. And then I try to have my thumb on top of the newborn's shin and then my the fingers of my hand right around the newborn's hips and so I'm putting some um, pressure down on the infant so I'm putting some posterior pressure down as I am abducting outward right and then continuing that pressure now more medially medially for the infant remember to check the hips one at a time and then I'm going to reverse that so putting pressure towards the infant as the hip is fully abducted and then bringing the um, leg upward, adducting it, and putting some posterior pressure, right? So one maneuver is putting the hip back into its socket if they have developmental hip dysplasia. The other one is dislocating the hip. And what I'm feeling for is that clunk, that significant clunk of developmental hip dysplasia. Remember that it's firstborn um, newborns, female newborns, um, anybody who has a family history of um, developmental hip dysplasia, um, and then breech deliveries. Those are the ones that are most at risk for having developmental hip dysplasia. So you definitely want to check those babies. We're checking them not only right after they're born, but also at two weeks, at two months, making sure that that hip, we don't feel that hip clunk with the Barlow and Ortolani maneuver. Remember, we want to do those maneuvers just one hip at a time, and ideally with the diaper off. So you're not having the diaper hold the hip into place and giving you a false negative. Um, and then as you move down, you're checking generally for the skin tone, skin condition. You're going to turn the infant over and look at their back, look at their tone as you're holding them on their abdomen. Um, they should be able to hold themselves up a little bit. They shouldn't be completely floppy. Checking along their entire spine, looking right down at their um, lumbosacral area, making sure you don't see any tufts of hair, any sacral dimples. If you do see a sacral dimple, you're going to look to see, make sure that you can visualize the bottom of that sacral dimple. And if you can't, you'll want to get an ultrasound to make sure that there isn't anything connected. Um, and then you are going to look at the infant's genitalia. Make sure that they don't have ambiguous genitalia. If they're male, make sure both of their testicles are down. Um, and that is the very basic of the newborn screening physical exam. Thanks so much.